Hey, how venomous is the copperhead? We got five live feedings, and it's going to be copperheads versus rattlesnakes coming up. Bangs in your face. Subscribe now. Hey, a big thank you. Andrew Vislowski, thank you so much, bro. Heather McKay, hey Heather, welcome to the Venom Squad, and thank you so much for the support. Heather's a brand new member of the Venom Squad, y'all. Let's show her some love. Thank you so much, Heather. Hey, Jeff McNally, Austin Smith, thanks, bro. We love you for it. Uh, Sean Black. Hey, Sean, we sent you a little something, Big Daddy, so be on the lookout for it. Hey, what's up, squad? Hey, um, I got to do a little bit of maintenance today first. We got to pull the big leg course. She just shed and pooped, so we got to inspect her, make sure she got everything off, and that's not an easy job. <laughs> but anyways, um, hey, today, this video, I'm going to tell you, you know, I've noticed that copperheads knock things down so quickly. They are such an efficient little predator when it comes to mice. And some of the rattlesnakes do it and some don't and things. So we're going to run our own little test here today. And I've got a bunch of live mice I need to feed off. So we're going to feed some stuff today. I'm going to feed our little pygmy rattlesnake. Um, let's see how good he does. And I'm going to feed our western copperhead compared to the pygmy. Then we're going to feed the western copperhead compared to like say the Western Diamondback. We're gonna see which ones just knock a mouse down quicker. Now, just because they may knock a mouse down quicker, doesn't mean that they're more venomous. It just means that that venom is adapted to work on that prey source even better. So, we're gonna run our own little trials here today. <laughs> but first, we're gonna get right to it. I've gotta, um, I gotta pull the big leg chorus and get her cleaned up. And we're gonna have a little bit of fun. So hang in there guys, we're gonna jump right in. Okay, we're gonna pull this big girl, and normally I just shift box her out, but both of my other big shift boxes are in use right now. They're in the Bushmaster room with snakes and feeding. So we gotta pick her up and put her in the can, and I don't like doing that. I mean, she's a big, dangerous snake, and when I say big, she's a mutant for a lay of course, but uh, she's a big old fur to lance. And normally we, we always film from this angle, guys. We can't do it from the back because there's not enough room back here for Miss Dina to be safe. And uh, this snake can get a little squirrely. <laughs> All right. Okay, big mama. Come on, big girl. Oh yeah, it's me. <laughs> wow, she is beautiful right now. You'll see here in a minute once I get her in the right position, because I need to get my hands on her actually. And that's a little spooky. <laughs> and you'll notice I'm stressed way back here because she is at a girl. She's every bit of six foot. Come on, big girl. There you go. Mulch on her. All right. Well, she looks nice and clean like she got everything off. Head's nice and clean, and what we'll do is we'll inspect that shed skin and make sure she's got both of her eye caps off. There you go, pretty girl. And everything off of her belly. I mean, she looks solid, she looks clean, but you know, it's easy to miss something, especially on a big, dangerous snake like this. And because you're not going to get close to it and look at it, so you got to inspect the skin to make sure you got everything. All right, she's actually behaving. And that is a good thing <laughs> as I look up over my glasses, right? <laughs> All right, let's get this skin out of here. And she's so big, it rips in pieces sometimes, but it always comes completely off. All right, 
Let me find the head. If I can find the head. There it is. Tear that off of there. And the most important thing is to make sure you got them eye caps off. And she does. Okay. And you can see. Right. There is one. And there's the other one. And I'll tell you. With the, with, with, with the big pit vipers. You got to make sure you get them pits out. Because. If shed gets stuck. In a heat seeking pit. It will build up bacteria in there after a certain amount of time and it'll get infected and you'll notice just like one side of that snake's head will start swelling up and that's because it's got a clogged heat pit and so i always make sure i get them out too and there's yep there's that one and there's that one cool wow listen to that rain huh babe okay and she's got her whole body there what a mess huh She's in good shape. So we're gonna clean this up real quick and then put Big Mama back and get right to the live feedings. We got her all cleaned up, the shed, the poop. We don't film that stuff. I, I think that's kind of, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's kind of silly film cleaning poop. But anyways, um, so she's ready to go back in and um, let me get this door open up a little more and we'll slide her big butt right back. Oh, look, look at there, D. Here, let me pick this up. There's, Look, this is why you wear shoes in your snake room, okay? I was down here cleaning this stuff up, and look, right there, on the floor. See that? I was just doing my scooper in there, picking up the poop and the mulch, and that somehow ended up on the floor. And you don't want to step on that. <laughs> I mean... That would hurt. Yeah, that, that would leave a mark. <laughs> Yeah, this is laying right here on the floor, just like that, right next to the cage. You know what I mean? But that's why you wear shoes in a reptile house. <laughs> Dina knows about that, huh, baby? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. And I keep my, my, my shit pretty tight around here. I mean, I'm not, like, hospital-grade clean, but... <laughs> But we keep everything pretty sanitized and clean. But, uh, but okay. Now let's get this big girl back in there. <laughs> you guys didn't really think I was going to use this, did you? <laughs> All right. Fangs on the floor. Using her baby hood. Amateur night. <laughs> now... You would think that I can use this like the shift boxes, but for some reason the can, she'll crawl in it, turn around, go right back out. So it's impossible to get her to stay in it and lit it up. So, but putting her back, I always just lay it on its side and let her just go in on her own. Nice and easy. I pick her up as little as possible. Stand in the heel bin. There you go. That's that's good thinking, babe. Go that way, big girl. There you go. Add a big girl. <laughs> I'm going home, huh? You left us a little surprise on the floor, huh, girl? Come on, sweetie. Get in there. Go ahead. Go ahead. There we go. That girl. All right. All right, snake secure. Okay, guys, hey, we're going to jump right over and get to what y'all been waiting on. <laughs> we're going to get to the live feedings right now. Okay guys, we're gonna start out today with the with the little peewee with a little pygmy rattlesnake here. And this one's actually a, a hybrid of a 
of a Sistaris uh, Bobberi and Strekkeri. Captive born, and I've raised this snake from the day it was born. But um, let's just see how quickly he can knock down a mouse, and I'm going to give him a fair size prey item. And now the venom of this guy is, it, it, it's, honestly, I don't think anybody's ever perished from a bite, from a, oh, he didn't waste no time from a, from a dusky or a pygmy rattlesnake, but, of the American variety anyways, but, oh, and a second bite. And uh, the venom is largely hemolytic, but bites are painful and, wow, okay. For a little guy, he did a pretty good job, didn't he? Amazing. But we're going to compare a few native rattlesnakes, native to the U.S., that is, um, to, the, to the copperhead. He is a mean little bugger, ain't he? Now let's just see who dispatches quicker. And I think that this this venom of the of the little uh, Cistaris, uh malarius, these little pygmy rattlesnakes, I think it's it, it's more geared towards killing uh, reptilian prey and amphibian prey. But as you can see, it worked pretty well on a on a rodent and. Uh, Wow, that was, that was pretty quick. And, that, and that's a big prey item for that little bitty rattlesnake. And he's a sub-adult. He's just a little over a year old now. And he has he has put some size on here recently. I started this little guy out on little teeny frogs and got him eating pinkies in several weeks. And and he switched over pretty quickly. And, and he's been growing like a weed here lately. But he's beautiful, isn't he? He is just a pretty little rattlesnake. And he's already looking for the head to get started. And he can take that down. He's He's been eating them close to that size. He'll have no problem with that. A little bitty fang stretch. Oh, now he's watching me. Yeah, we're going to back up and let this guy eat in peace. Told you you'd get it down. <laughs> and that's a good meal for him. That'll last him several weeks. He good to go. He'll have that digested probably in four or five days, but I'll give him a couple weeks before I feed him again. That's a pretty good sized meal for him. But down the hatch it goes. All right, we're going to bump it up here, and we're going to move to a to another snake, uh, the Western Diamondback. And let's just see how quickly a Western Diamondback dispatches that mouse compared to this pygmy rattlesnake. I got a feeling it's going to be a little bit quicker. <laughs> we're going to move on, y'all. All right, guys, and for our next animal of the day that we're going to feed... Now, this is a Crowless Atrox. This is your classic Western Diamondback, but this one is a little bit special. This is what we call a melanistic. He's a morph. This was bred by a buddy of mine, Slytherin Sal. But let me tell you something. Um, this will be probably a little bit quicker. Uh, Western Diamondbacks are pretty hot. That's a, it's largely a hemolytic venom, but I'll tell you, the crotoxin and is I mean it's it's mild toxin. It's got some it's got some hurt juice going on, okay? And I think this is gonna be really quick. 
Oh, yes. Okay. Not as quick as I thought, but a lot of times it's bite placement and stuff like that. But I'll tell you something. This, this venom is designed to kill rodents and larger prey items as they grow. I mean, when this guy's five foot long, he'll eat rabbits, you know. Western diamond bats get pretty big. And I gotta be careful because this guy is a mean little booger. Let's just see how long it takes for that prey item to perish. Well, we'll see how the copperhead does. And for some reason, copperheads knock mice down fast. And we're going we're gonna to feed a copperhead, too. That took a little longer than I thought. Oh, yeah, he done. Maybe he only got one fang in it. I don't know. But it did hemorrhage. I see some blood spots in there. But... We'll let him enjoy his prize, and we're gonna move on and feed the copperhead here in a minute. Let's see how quick the copperhead dispatches prey. You know, this snake wasn't even in the lineup today, but since I'm feeding live, we're gonna go ahead and feed Dan McCarty's war. This is little Evelyn. This is the Yucatan rattlesnake, the Krola Zabcon. And it's time to break out a, a real destroyer here for a quick clip. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, and nothing dispatches as quick as a Zobcon. These things are just freaking deadly. That is a whole lot of hurt juice right there. Myotoxins, cryotoxins, hemolytic, hemorrhagic. I mean, this venom does it all. And it's neurotoxic to boot. So, and look at this here. Look, that's, that's it. That's done. End game right there. And she ain't letting go of it. Little Evelyn is a destroyer, boy. That's it. She done. I mean, seconds flat. I'll tell you, the, the Mexican crotalids, I mean, they make our crotalids here look like sissies. They are just deadly. I love my Mexican rattlesnakes. But that's little Evelyn. She getting big. She can actually eat a mouse a whole lot bigger than that. But I figure we'll give her a treat. Dan, that's your that's your baby girl. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and let her swallow that real quick. Well, while we're at it, we might as well feed little Evelyn's partner here. This is a holdback male from last year's breeding. Let's see how he does today. Oh, oh, oh. Man, the Zobcons are just destroyers. And look at the color on this male. This male is smoking. He is so gorgeous. Go to the Zobcon. Full effect. And that's it. Let's see here. Oh yeah, that's it. That's all she wrote. Notice they always bite them in the same place too. They bite them right behind the head. I mean, they're just, they're so accurate and their venom is so damn potent. They dispatch prey very quickly. The high concentration of neurotoxins in there just, just knocks that prey right out the box. Very efficient little predator. Well, now we're going to move on and feed a copperhead. 
this is the rattlesnake versus copperhead video so let's go ahead and and get a big uh western copperhead out and see how quickly he can dispatch a mouse that's it i mean that was seconds flat just amazing to get bit by that would be a damn nightmare it'd be a short nightmare because you'd be dead quickly especially if you ain't got the right anti-venom unbelievable okay for our final snake today we are gonna do the the keistradon latisinctus now this is the the western copperhead and let's just see how quick he can dispatch this mouse oh 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 well i'll tell you what i think that might be the record right there i mean excluding the zob cons but like i said the copperhead for some reason their venom just knocks mice out quickly Even though the the Corliss Aatrox, the Western Diamondback, is it, it it has a more potent venom. I mean, two humans. I mean, to I mean, there's human fatalities attributed to Western Diamondback bites, and copperheads are like few and far between when it comes to a fatality. It's it's it's, it's rare, but I'll tell you what, that was smoking fast, and that's it. <laughs> wow. Jesus, good job, little buddy. That's a that's a two year old male. I raised him from a little bitty baby, and now with the with copperheads, just in the last year or so, you know they've they've been separated into just two subspecies now. There's the the western copperheads and the, the eastern copperheads, which they used to be five. There was five subspecies, but uh, but they broke them into two. Actually, a good buddy of mine, uh, Tim, done the, the DNA study on it, and he's a herpetologist, and he'd done the, the, all the footwork on that study and and submitted it, and, and it just went into play just not too long ago. So they're broken into two species instead of five now. It's the, the eastern and the western. But uh, I'll tell you what, that that's a shocker. <laughs> Me, he... He dispatched that mouse quicker than uh, than the Aatrox did, but uh, there's a lot of variables. But it goes to show you, them copperheads are pretty hot, <laughs> and that's a hemotoxic venom, but it it does the job quickly on mice. How about that copperhead, huh? I mean, pow! <laughs> What's up, buddy? Don't worry, dude. Your new cage is on its way. We've been waiting forever for it, like six weeks to deliver it. But anyways, hey, um, don't forget about the merch, guys. Um, go to our uh, venomcentral.org and it'll link you right to our Teespring store. Um, we're working on a new shirt here pretty soon too. Um, so, hey, if you're new to the channel, hit that V logo thing and subscribe now. And come on back and check us out at Venom Central. This is Willie, we're checking out. Later.